Here we are at the Amsterdam Skate Park. Uh, yeah, Mongo Chatter 8. Nice. 8, my favorite number. Is it? Yeah. Get out of here. No, it is. Um, my old man played baseball forever, and that was his number. Favorite number. Sick. Also, if you want to get hippie about it, it's the infinity symbol. So okay. There you go. I was born in August. 8. <laughs> eight, eight, no, eight, ten. Sorry, but eight is okay. August, so. Ladies and gentlemen, Tom Dupree. Is it, I'm saying that right, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. I mean, it's Dupere, you know, French Canadian, whatever. Yeah. But New England Dupree, you know, like the great dumbing down word. Yes. <laughs> but yes, you, you said it correct. Okay, that's how we're saying it. Yes. Right on. Don't want to do like a Mike V thing or something. He's got a hard name to say. Um. So this is like a little change in format. We're sitting here uh, at Amesbury Skate Park, which is uh, you. You built this thing, right? Or yeah, my, not just me. But yeah, myself, um, Noah Powell. Yep. Uh, Justin Gorman. A ton of people. Yeah. You know, like, but I guess we were the uh, responsible for the skate park building here. Yeah, yeah. And this this was the thing that came first. Um. I guess essentially it did because we had originally we had um, the Jersey barriers, which is the, the back of this. That was kind of the original idea, and I kind of uh, I scammed the city into giving us the Jersey barriers, and that sat for a little while because we were like, "How are we gonna do this?" Blah blah blah. But then Noah and I built that. Um, I think we did the flat rail first, which is now that big ledge uh -huh. that was originally in a, a flat rail, and then we were like, "Let's." Build a manual pad and make that a ledge. So we did that first, and the city kind of showed up and was like, "What are you doing? Like, oh, we're improving the park." And kind of like the conversation started. We didn't get shut down. They let us build it, but they're like, "We need to have a conversation." And they kind of basically, after being like, "Well, look, we built skate parks," you know, we, we gave them some some like uh, references, like you know, we're legit. You know, we're not just building. to spend any money we'll pay for it and as soon as we said that they're like oh okay yeah you know so then I think this was we did half of this out of bags and you know hand mixed or whatever and then we did the other half of the truck but yeah we just kind of slowly went through the fucking red tape which is the, the worst thing that you have to do the building's easy talking to the people it's the hard work. Yeah, but we just kept on it. It would be like Noah and I would go to these meetings, and I'd be like, "All right, you lead the charge on this one. I don't have the like mental fortitude to deal with this." And the next one, I, you know, because it was like a meeting about the meeting you just had yeah. a month ago, and it's like we, we could have built it, you know. And then finally, I think we wore them down because we just kept showing up and be like, "Yeah, we're doing this. We're doing this," and then they just left us alone. So. We would do whatever we could when we had time and money and just grassroots fundraisers. Like we had a Halloween bash here, you know, and like raised the rest of the money to do the other half. And like, what was that skate park in Bradford? Was it Frozen Waves? Yes, we did a fundraiser there and raised enough to like, I don't even remember what we did. Yeah, just shit like that, make yeah. t-shirts, whatever. That's how you so, do it. Here we are trying to still keep it going there's like a um, I guess now it's a non-profit I kind of stepped away from I just don't have time to try to raise money just being busy with work and a family or whatever but luckily some people have taken it Fucking <laughs> chatter number eight. We shall not be stopped. We got something. We got the beginning though from the other one. Yeah, so this, first five minutes or so. That's cool. We'll make it. We'll we'll edit that. So yeah, we'll we'll we'll, co we'll cobble some shit together. Uh, once again, Tom Dupree, thanks for doing this, man. Yes, thanks, thanks for putting you. up. Thanks for having me. And um, yeah, so we're sitting here. Um, 
on the back side of oh i can see these were the yep. uh, the og barriers yep. we kind of uh tricked the city into giving us two um not so much tricked i guess they donated them but we kind of it's better to ask for forgiveness than to ask permission sometimes so so you you said before you like you hit up the dpw and you're like oh the fucking like mom told you to ask dad so kind of yeah. yeah dad said it was cool yeah. you know and uh that type yeah basically like skater stuff you know you're you're manipulating the system i guess to yeah. get something you know and not in a <laughs> not in a mean or like we're not trying to like do anybody wrong or just, yeah like, we could get those over there you know like I guess at first we were just thinking like, cool, we'll do a barrier. But the way it got set up, they made a corner. So we were like, shit, let's just use it as a back and, you know, build a pocket. It's, you know, evolved over time as we got money and whatever. So there it is. So they just, <laughs> they just like plopped them down in a certain formation yeah, and you guys yeah. showed up and... So, um, myself and my buddy Justin lived down the street and they, we came and like we made this uh, this footer here so they'd be up a little higher you know mm -hmm. and just like yeah put it on this and they came and dropped them off and like we're like oh shit I guess I guess it's real I guess we gotta do this now yeah, so yeah. then it was just a matter of like trying to get money and you know resources and all that so that we did fundraiser skate jam type shit you know just grassroots stuff skaters do made it happen and it's kind of just slowly evolved from there. But, you know whenever whenever we can get time or money we try to make something you know and as you get older time and money are both like harder to come by yeah, <laughs> you know especially yeah. if you got a family and responsibilities and or i guess you're less like um you're more conservative with your time and well yeah and or just it's bit. like you only have so much of each yeah you know and like you just do what you can you know so and, like now it's it's become uh the skate park as far as i know is a, it's a non-profit and some other people have kind of taken it over as far as the, the fundraiser aspect of it which it's become a bigger thing i think there's like uh i believe there's about 70 grand you know sitting in a in a in a fund right now and we're trying to like work it you, now you have to go through certain channels it's not just like sick we raised a thousand dollars let's build a bank account it's like okay there's seventy thousand dollars you have to show how this money is going to be spent you know you gotta like earmark it all kind of pretty much and it's like to, and to do like things on a bigger scale like me being a skate park builder i have access to certain um, equipment and things like that it's like that stuff you know i i can donate so much of my time of labor and this and that but it does cost money to use these things so to do things on a bigger scale it's like okay let's bring in some of the people i work with and it's like it's this it's this weird line too of like um people hear that and they're like you're just trying to get paid to do this and it's like well yeah i do need to get paid for some of my services but the amount of sweat equity we already have into this place do you know how much money of my own and my friends have put into this place not to mention it's just a fucking labor yeah and it's like sure yeah i do need to get paid because it's not just mixing some bags of concrete up now it's like serious like what we're trying to do you know? yeah so it's like that stuff does cost money but with that being said, I've also like volunteered as far as like, hey, when we have to demo some stuff, I'll do that for free. Yeah. To, you know what I mean? To give what I can, you know? And like, it seems weird that people would be like leery about that because I would look at it as like artisan skate park, like basically, like you guys are on par with like your team pains and your dreamlands and Thank grind you. lines, like <laughs> world class skate park building company. And it's like, we have these dudes in our back pocket that are basically yeah. we'll use this as their sketch pad yeah and fucking help like like not every town that wants a skate park has access to people that are doing exactly. this shit on a professional yep. global scale you and, know and the thing is like like does the town realize that i don't think see that's kind of where it's like this weird gray area of like 
I'm trying to like go meet with the mayor to like be like, hey, look, you have seventy thousand dollars, which yeah, that's that's seventy thousand dollars is nothing to sneeze at, but in the year twenty twenty in construction, mm. seventy grand is not much. Yeah. So what we're trying to propose to do for that amount of money, you're getting a lot. Yeah. With the fact that, like I said, like I'm willing to donate a lot of my time. I've already donated a ton. Of, a lot of people have, but you're gonna get something like you're gonna get a professional built thing for not nearly what it's gonna cost other places. Yeah. And that's just like trying to express that, and it's like, and people look at that of like, well, what are you trying to get out of it? Yeah. And it's not a monetary thing. It's a better shit to skate yeah like yeah. i i have this skill set i have access to these these um the this like a concrete pump like mixing bags of concrete sucks 80 pound bags of concrete do you know how many fucking bags it took to do this like i don't want to do that anymore i'm almost 50 dude my back is jacked yeah so like i have access to this stuff that makes that way easier but it costs money to, like, you know, obviously you have to pay, like, the, the nozzle men to shoot it. Like, that's a specialized, he's a certified shotcrete nozzle man. It's not some dude off the street ain't picking that up. Yeah. You get killed. Yeah. You know, like, it's no joke. So, like, to express all these things to the powers that be of, like, look, man, you're going to get something really good here. And it's all just because of people, I think, regular people find it hard to believe that like no we're just doing this because we're skaters man like yeah, that's yeah. just skateboarding like you money is kind of always like the last thing on your mind it's more of like what can we do what yeah can we, you know what i mean at least for me my generation and like how i came up it's just like no just you do it to do it and yeah it's the experience like we were saying like experience is like to me is way more important than material possessions money all that you need it to survive it's a necessity but i'd much rather have an experience that you're gonna remember for the rest of your life. we were doing a thing where like a bunch of us had gotten married like in three years or four years in a row and it kind of started with me of like my bachelor party as we went to connecticut camped out skated all the cool shit there and then the next year my buddy josh and then the year after Dave Slauson got married and we did the same thing and like I was saying my buddy Jeff came out Jeff Pop Rocky who is like an unsung skate park builder he did rot Connecticut if you've been there it's on par with like FDR it's it's a epic fucking place and he started that kind of the same way as this like he did something small and it, it just evolved yeah and the town got behind it you know and uh, he left a note on a, on a windshield of like, hey man, there's this uh, concrete like water slide thing on this uh, ski hill, and it's kind of over here, but you know, like yeah. this treasure map, and we're like, oh shit, and we went and found that, and like to this day, it's still like I'm blown away that that it, it was not perfect by any means, but it was the the experience of going there with your friends and finding this thing that you've been searching for that since you started skating yeah. you know what i mean it's always to me it's always been the adventure of it of like what's behind that building what's down the road i can't tell you how many times i'm fucking driving somewhere and i'm like huh i've never seen that building and, or like oh, I'll, I'll keep driving a little you know yeah. like you never know you never know, you never know. And it's just it never stops yeah for me it's like constant 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 but the going back to what, like what i was saying it's the experience of that and we still talk about it like hey, remember days back in the morning when we went to the thing and just all the other shit that like the 10 of us or whoever how many were there shared of these little inside jokes and remember that guy we met that, it's you know it's and, so like, rad that 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 your buddy like like, he could have just as easily not written that note, right? Mm. And just gotten his coffee and fucking peaced out. Yeah, like, yeah, And then yeah. that whole yep. 
that, like you said before, choose your own adventure. Yeah, for like sure, that man. Wouldn't that story wouldn't have gone that way? Yeah, we probably just would have gone to the skate park, had a killer time. But he was know, just this wizard that had this knew, dormant knowledge that was like, that, here's yeah, and it was, off you go. Yeah, and he knew that like, all right, these dudes are on a fucking trip right now. And, like, this is gonna be really, like the icing on the cake, so to speak. Yeah, I I remember like a few years back, if you remember the. Uh, the Lost Highway mm -hmm. in the Port. We had some shit going on down there. And I remember, I, I still call him Tall Paul. Paul Tall. Sure, sure. Right? Yeah, I've yeah. called him that since he was a little kid. That's sick. Right? So, uh, TP. Tall Paul, like, I think this was the early, like, I think it was like MySpace days, which is, that sounds weird to say. Mm -hmm. But anyways, he saw some pictures and he like, where is that? And I was like, no, I'm not going to tell you, but... I fucking wrote him a map, basically, and gave him some landmarks, yes. and they, they were young, they were like, they didn't have licenses, that's for sure, because he filmed it, and like, showed it to me, and they skated from Amesbury to Newburyport, and they found it, and he was like, dude, we found it, and it was like, to me, I was like, sick, that's exactly what I wanted to happen, because, so that spot... Was this the blue the no, blue ramp version? No, that's that was like there was some concrete shit that like um, Sammy and, yeah, Al yeah. and those dudes had done. So to like backtrack from that story, the way my history with that place was Chris Santos, who's you know him and Steve O'Hara from Pioneers were like my fucking idols growing up. They were the older dudes. They had the the fiberglass blue ramp that. I forget where it was before. Oh, is that the old, Cashman old park? Old, yes, yeah. old Newburyport skate park. That went away. They grabbed that, and then I worked at um, Shaw's in Seabrook. It's not there anymore, but like, it's like a 19-year-old kid or something, and uh, he would he lived in Salisbury or Seabrook, and he would come in and get grow and we'd shoot the shit. Out. And then I came out one day from work and there was a fucking note on my windshield another said, note said the blue ramp and it was a map and no so that's way, what dude. i did the same thing to paul that's like, so and sick. i dude i had that note for so long i saved it in a fucking skater's shoe box you got all your little fucking knickknacks stickers and bullshit yeah for so long and then just from moving around so much i lost it but man i would like every every now and again that note would like i'd have it as a bookmark and you know it's going to be like you so know. it was like cashman park old highway yeah and kane's house yes and then it went to uh justin's house for in haverhill and now it's at paul Murray's house. that so thing's sick. been going for over 30 years i think that's like late 70s that was up in uh near Portsmouth at Newington maybe there was an indoor park but that from my knowledge was the, the blue ramps were like these uh, pre-made fiberglass skate parks that I think originated in New Jersey and they kind of there's some in Arizona that are still going there's like like it was one skate park that got dismantled well, no no it was like a kind of how we are we're a skate park building company oh, they okay. made like these pre cat pre-made fiberglass ramps that you can configure there was some that had pockets there was one in arizona i skated in the 90s it was a full pipe i, I think they just took four and Holy fucking stacked shit. them up so did rasher it, land maybe because that's i mean people probably know but it's like basically like uh what a four foot ramp yeah and there's like like two inches of vert there's some vert on it for sure it's quick so if you yeah. put four of them together does it go like flat wall i where can't it, remember like, i just remember clack. being like holy <laughs> shit this is gnarly but they had like pockets you know like but it was like almost no flat bottom. it was janky as shit but it was rad yeah like, what is this you know but yeah going back though of like i wanted paul and his buddies to have this experience i don't know if he remembers that i hope he does i'm gonna try to remember to bring that up but like wow. that's the type of shit you remember yeah it's like here it is like i don't even know 25 30 years later i still remember him putting that note and coming out it was raining i can totally remember wow. this it was raining i got in my car turned it on black sabbath was playing tape and i read the note like four times like and I just remember no cell phone, you know, and I called my buddy Dan, I'm like, I know where it is. <laughs> Next day, we're there. Dude, at that point, it wasn't even like, now it's like a walking trail, it's like a designated uh, yeah. green belt thing, which is sick, but yep. it, 
I still go there with like um, my family. My daughter will skate with me. My wife will ride her bike, and it's cool. It's a really cool space. But then it was overgrown. It was like a jungle down there. Yeah. We had kind of hacked away a bunch of it and like had some other shit there besides the blue ramp. So yeah. I guess that was kind of like DIY before DIY. Yeah. You, know, you just drag whatever down there. You know. And that's always been to me. Skaters do that. Like there's nothing to skate you create something. yeah you, skaters are pretty fucking uh, adaptable yeah you know like you're told like no there, there's no money for a skate park okay I mean, we go find some abandoned piece of shit and next thing you know you got this thriving thing this living thing that creates a community essentially you know and that's to me like that's the uh that's like the essence of like humanity you know like a, a culture yeah you know like you create you create like um i know you, you know, we, we share this thing yeah we look out for each other we look out for our space and with that being said also like you welcome people into that you know what i mean like as far as uh, you, you would like to think that like skateboarding is pretty accepting and you know there's fucked up shit everywhere skateboarding included yeah. but for me it's always been you know like hey man it doesn't matter how good you are just come do it yeah. you know and like that's what always kept me involved and loving it and still to this day you and myself and you and whoever we're all here to do the same thing and that's that's the beauty of it is like gay straight black white just come skate yeah you know like it doesn't matter and uh there's always going to be bullshit, whatever, but you would think that, like, we can keep that going. That's a special thing, which skateboarding creates, it in, does. in my mind. And, you know, there's always going to be people you don't vibe with, whatever, but, and like we were saying earlier, like, man, we, we should just, like, say what's up for them. Yeah. Uh, hey, man, you don't got to, like, have some crazy fucking mind-blowing conversation just hey man what's up or like somebody does something sick yeah fucking respect i might not be into what you're into but i can i can like respect what you're as a human this is your your deal whatever it is you know as long as you're not being a dick do your thing man like hey, life's too short to give a shit we're all so different but we're all trying to do we're all just trying to do our thing just to try to demonstrate like kind of the, the the impact of like the, the camaraderie and the culture of skating compared to other things is like yeah dude like you could be into whatever archery yeah you know and you're traveling around with your girlfriend you're in a different town and you go to the local archery spot yeah. and you're doing your shit, you're gonna pack up your shit and go back to your hotel and it's a very isolated yeah, thing, yeah. whether it's archery, basketball, whatever. Skating's like you go to the skate park and you you might not leave, you might end up going to a house party yeah, yeah. and fucking meeting your future wife yeah, or that's... whatever it is. Like you're, you're like in this, tribal fucking for sure it, it just yeah. sucks you in there's nothing else with that kind of connectivity yeah. or or like fraternity i that that i really know of that's not like an organized like the marines or like yeah, some type of yeah. shit like that it's infinite you know and it's it's a toy but it also like like i said earlier like it opens so many doors and if you're willing to fucking walk through those doors and skate through those doors <laughs> like man you can go to some places. Yeah. You can see some shit. And not even just, I'm not just talking about of like, oh man, I skated the sickest fucking spot. It's like, no man, we went here to skate, but like, then I met these people, like you said, dude, I met this chick. You know, yeah. or like, dude, we, we went there and then these dudes were having a party and then we went to the show and like, dude, this band's sick. And like, you know what I mean? Like, you just keep moving with it. It's, it's a living, breathing thing that, Anybody can do it, anytime, anywhere, anyhow. And we're all on equal ground here. It's, it's a reality check of like, boom, dude, you're here right now. You know what I mean? Yeah. And this is this is real. You just eat shit. What's up? Yeah. And that's life. Yep. You know what I mean? Like, 
shit ain't always gonna be fucking ebb and flow, ups and downs, peaks and valleys. Like, you're up one day, you're down the next. It's all navigating it. It's permeated every part of my fucking, yeah. my DNA. And when you were saying figuring stuff out about work, I was wondering if you meant actually figuring out, like, actual, like... Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, because most people probably know, but you work for artists and skate parks. I'd say I'm at work and we're pouring concrete and I'm in it. We're shooting concrete and I'm cutting the piece, forming the, you know, the concrete piece. I'm thinking about like, sometimes it's, it's almost the same as skating because it's like, I've done it so long that I can just kind of like shut my brain off mm -hmm. and I'm doing, it's almost muscle memory. I yeah. know what I have to do and then do this painting. Okay, yeah, I, I want to do it on this. I want to do it on wood. It's colors. You know what I mean? And I get a visual thing going, or like I'm skating, and I'm like, man, I want to build this thing. How can I do this? It's just always going through my mind. Whether it's like I want to do something on it, I want to build something, I want to create something visually like art wise you know it's just like always 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 to the point of like am i out of my mind yeah you, you got to check yourself yeah. too because like the wheels spin yeah hard. yeah it's yeah, spin hard especially when i was younger but i had to go skate i couldn't shut my brain off it was just constant and i it just like from the moment, like I think too, like growing up when I did in the 80s of like, uh, uh, it was a different time, you know, like I just was, I was an outdoor kid. Mm. I was outside from sun up to sundown. Come home in the street lights, come on if you want to eat dinner. If you don't, you miss dinner. Yeah. You gotta figure it out. You yeah. know what I mean? And I missed a lot of dinners, you know, because like, <laughs> we're out skating and that's we did man once skating took over my life like 12 13 it was like where can we go and yeah you go down the block and then you go down the, and the next thing you know you're downtown oh what's down here and you're just you you figure out your wherever you live real quick yeah because you're just at least for us we just we were on our skateboards 24 7 everywhere we went you we were on your board and like you, you would go, all right, we're going to go downtown to the billiard, but you'd take, like, it would, I lived, like, right down the street, but it would take me an hour and a half to get there, because I'd be like, what's down there? Or, yeah. Like, what's over here? You know what I mean? And then from that, you're like, what's in the next town? Yeah. And then you skate there, and then, like I said, like, oh, the bus goes there. Oh, the bus goes here. Oh, there's a train here. That goes to the city, and, like... As kids, 14, 15, we were already taking the train into Boston and like skating. No adults. Like, that's that prepares you for like life. For sure. In for a crazy sure. way. Just being like, like I, I'm, I'm from Newburyport, right? But I always felt like I had street smarts. For sure. Because I spent my childhood, in whether the it was, yeah, whether it was on Newburyport or like you said, going into Boston. Yeah. It's just like you're dealing with what kids aren't supposed to deal for with sure. or whatever you know it opens your eyes real quick yeah. to like what's around you and how to uh how to assess things at least for us of like all right maybe don't go there yeah you, that looks dangerous you, you know what i mean or like that that has that has some danger but i think we'll be all right you know you learn how to read things pretty pretty well just being out and amongst you get in situations and hey there's this thing to skate there but it's in a sketchy neighborhood okay let's check it out and you kind of at least from us like we just learned how to read the, the signs of like yeah we shouldn't be here right now you yeah know? and like or like no this thing we got to check this out yeah. you know and like you learn how to the other thing too is like just keep moving just yeah keep moving you know like there's some places yeah cool man you can session but like for us it was like hit, 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 like boom, 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 like cover as much ground as you can. Yeah. Uh, we were we were all about just the like the adventure aspect of it. As a as a younger person, like I was super into just reading and then like when you get to a certain age and you discover certain books, like I said, like Kerouac and things like that that were just like, hey man, go. Yeah. Go. That 
combined with skating, I just went, whoa, okay, and like yeah. hitchhiking, 16 years old, oh, hitch, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I'm thinking about it now, I mean, it was a different world, sure. but at the same time, like, we're hitchhiking to this, like hitchhiking to the city. Like, not having money for the train, so, like, we would hitchhike to the city and back, like, thinking back, like, how did I ever do that? Yeah. But you did it. You didn't with think like about it. With, like, a buck thirty yeah, in dude. your pocket I or something. I was talking about this with somebody the other day. We would skate literally all day, all night, and, like, not eat. Or, like, yeah, we'd have a dollar, and, like, you get a hot dog at the gas station. Why? Yeah. Like, you'd find, like, water fountains to drink out. You know what I mean? And, like, how did we ever do that? But you did it. And that that prepares you for, like, you learn how to, like, be in situations and how to just deal with things. Like, okay, well, this is what's happening. No point in, like, ooh, this is so cool. Like, right. what's that going to do? Yeah. You deal with it. I and think it like, just makes you resilient like exactly. that. You fall down, you're going to get up. Yeah. Like, you're not going to wait around for, you got fired. You're going to sit there and cry and wait for somebody exactly. to do another job. Go get another yeah. job. You and know? Like, that skating teaches that, like, you fall and you eat shit, you can eat, lay there. Okay, what's that going to do? Right. Get back up and either try it again or do something else. Or yeah. try something else. Try a different trick, you know? And that's, like, life lessons that, like, this stupid toy teaches you. The experiences that skateboarding can give you are just, you can't trade that for anything. You know, like just places I've been, people I've met, things I've seen are just, to me, I'm going to carry that for my entire life. Yeah. And I want to, going back, like just something stupid, like making the little treasure map for Paul. I hope he remembers Oh that. my God. You know what I mean? Because it's like, those are the moments that like, that means something. That is. You know, that's like, like it's it's not to be corny, but it's like heartwarming. Yeah, that's like that's some yeah. goony shit. Like for sure. You know, like I've always like, dude, <laughs> skateboarding is like the game. Yeah. You know, like <laughs> all these misfit nerd whatever, they all like come together and do their thing, and everybody's their own own person. But we all get together to celebrate this thing. And, you know, like like I said, it's like you show up at the park, and it's like this dude's fresh, this dude's fucking ash, this dude's tech, this guy's gnarly in it, but it's like, they all coexist. Yeah. Or you hope they do. There's so much insanely good skateboarding, like, all spectrum. Grant Taylor, Austin, Tiago, Tyshawn, like, what? Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's just insane how good people are, consistent, and just like, every kind of like it's all there man like anything you want to like see you know, like from the like all-terrain dude to the tech gnarly to the tech wizard dude to the whatever it's all there and it's like it's sick because it's all like pretty accepted these days yeah. instead of like i'm a street guy i'm a tranny guy i'm a legend you know what i mean there's i'm sure there's still that but i think most of it now is people are just like let's skate cool what's in front of us you know like you got dudes like i shod who can fucking 540 but then just fuck up the rail you know and like it grant taylor he can fucking do whatever he wants I'm whatever <laughs> so like which is like that's what you want to see you know to me anyways and but uh, i like everything in between too you know like some tech dude that's like i don't know what the fuck that dude just did but I, I wish I could do it. Yeah. But I, I'm hyped that that guy does it. I'm hyped that guy exists. Yeah. You know, because it, how boring would it be? Like, I don't know. Like, I'm not trying to talk shit on sports, but that guy bats lefty. That guy bats righty. Right. He's a, that guy's a home run hitter. That guy's like, it just, that's honestly why I like basketball because it's really out of like those four sports. It's the only one with like a little bit of flair to it. Yeah, where it's like yeah. I feel like basketball shows the part that spins. It's similar to skating. It shows your personality by I the agree. way that you, yeah, like yeah. the line that you choose or whatever. For you know? sure. Um, but you know, I'm not like into basketball, but I just feel like if if I were to yeah, I get, get into something else, that yeah. might be. And I like all the, it's kind of like skating to like the, like those guys in the NBA, they're like, it's a culture. For sure. They're yeah, like, yeah. and they all, they're all bros and they all know each other yeah. and they all like the behind the scenes shit. It's, it reminds me of skating a little yeah, bit. 
for sure. Have you or like has Artisan or that you're aware ever built like something specific like oh this is fucking so and so is coming here and this is definitely happened like build this up because fucking oh. has anything that specific um, ever been not laid so out? much like that but there's definitely like if we're building like some big bowl or something and depending where we are we're like oh man i know this dude's like from around here yeah like, so he's gonna fuck this thing up you know and, like we uh we have this dude that that works for us his name's dave maxwell and uh he he was known as science fair oh dude i remember Naked seeing boneless i remember seeing photos of him in thrasher yes back, so is he from the midwest he's north carolina okay carolina boy <laughs> you should have glasses yes, and shit yes. yeah so That's he's crazy. wild as hell right? they don't make him like that He's a special human being because, like, he can do shit. The bigger the terrain is, the more comfortable he is. And it's, it, he has this ramp in his backyard that like, I can't even explain it. 13 foot deep. And he just skates it by himself. Is it but, like, um, a, like a half? It's a vert. Like, it's vert bold. It, it's pretty much everything. <laughs> yeah, it's, dude, it looks like a fucking spaceship. Like you go there, the shallow end, I'm scared to death of it. The roller goes into the deep end. That dude is like bombing a fucking San Francisco hill and he just, he's just like, skates big terrain like it's a mirror. And he's like in his mid forties, you know, but still like just, it, to, to watch it, it's fucking, it's, it's like beautiful. Yeah. Cause it's like, wow, this guy has spent his entire life for learning this discipline. Yeah. But it, it's not so much even just like practice. It's just you do this thing. You know what I mean? I, I, I it's like you Yeah, I never felt like I practiced you know, skateboarding. But know? it's like it's kind of crazy because like I, I forget where I read it and it might have even been like Dave Carney wrote something, but like or you know what? It was uh the short story that Scott Bourne wrote. And he likened it skateboarding to like a martial art where like you're not even really aware of it especially when you're younger you're practicing this thing it's not practice you're just constantly like think about like when you learn to kick flip how fucking long did you do that you know and you're not doing anything you're not doing and then you do one. yeah cool. okay and you don't, you're not even conscious of the fact of like you're so focused on like oh, i'll flip this thing i'll land on it and then I want to be rolling and do it. You know, the next step, you don't even realize, like, you're learning discipline. Yeah. You're learning focus. Like, these things that, like, and you're not even, like, you don't have a coach going, you got to do this, like this, right now. You're just out on your own. Maybe somebody's like, oh, turn your foot this way or turn your foot that way. But it's intrinsic. Yeah. Yeah. And then you just, it just <laughs> clicks. And you, that's just how you operate. You know yeah. what I mean? Because, like, and then it's like, oh, that's how so and so does kickflips now. That's yeah. how you do your kickflips yeah. now, you know? Yeah. Or like, um, I, I had this conversation with somebody not too long ago. Like, think about just like, say you come here and you're doing whatever, and like you hit a crack and you fall, and like, ah, that sucked or whatever. That fall you took, most people would be fucked. Oh, if yeah. they felt like that. <laughs> yeah. You know what dude. I mean? So you learn like. I, I don't know how else to put it, but like you learn how to take an ass for it. Yeah, you yeah. Know, that you give yourself. Yeah. Like you have to be wired a certain way to like, because there's no two ways about it. If you're going to ride a skateboard, you're going you to eat shit. Yeah. No matter who you are, the best pro, whoever, you're going to get whooped. And that's just how it goes. And once you learn that, of like, well, you could be like the sickest dude kick flipper but you'll you'll learn you'll lie you'll land a million of them and then one million and one you're gonna get broke off yeah that's just how it goes sure and you learn like early on like well this is part of the game and like that's a huge life lesson of like well life's gonna fucking whoop up on you at times and then other times you're gonna fucking stick it every time every time <laughs> yeah. every time and you just roll with that you know what i mean and that's like you don't even think about it anymore consciously but you it's there you just it's just always 
I, I don't know how to like put it into words, but it's just it's just part of it, and you just deal with it. And like, well, I fell, get back up, you know. And like most people, are like, fuck, I fell, ah, you know. And it's like their lives are fucking turned upside down. Yeah, for like you know? a week, they're yeah. like, oh, and they're telling everyone the story. Yeah. And I fell down, and it was crazy. And it's like, just like for us, it's just like that was fucking breakfast yeah like i mean dude look <laughs> at i mean i i can't watch like call of meat and those things uh, they yeah, fucking fuck me up mentally I but like do that you see like uh, uh, jake brown that slam he took on the dude i was there like, I, w- I was there in person because yeah. i was working for espn Holy at the time shit. but like it was crazy i thought he was dead yeah but think about like the that. place was silent and i thought i was like working for espn at the time and i was like Wow, these motherfuckers got a big problem on their hand. This yeah. dude is dead. dead. Like, but that dude got up, right? Like, dude, you, you might as well have been hit by a fucking Mack truck. Yeah. Like, how? But that's, like, ingrained in a skater's brain. Like, he probably, I mean, I'm sure he got hurt for sure. But, but really, I think he fractured a wrist and had some, like, marginal internal yeah, damage. Yeah. But he didn't like, he wasn't dismembered. No, no, no. You know, I think you just, you just like, over time, naturally learn how to like, okay. Because think about it, sometimes you slam and it happens so fast, you're like, what the fuck just happened? Or other times you're slamming, you see it before it even happens. You're sure. Like, this is going to go wrong. Yeah. And it like, slow mo's almost. Oh, you yeah. know, and you're like, okay, you tuck and roll or whatever you got to do, your, your instinct kicks in. And same thing of like learning or doing a trick can happen like, whoa, I did it, you know, or like sometimes I can like, this is going to get real fucking corny and hippie, but like I can shut off what's going around me and I'm focused on where I'm going and what I want to do. And I picture it, uh, you you hear people say it all the time, picture it in your mind happening before you do it. Yeah. And you can almost like. I, fucking Kevin Day said something one time of like, you can see into the future, and it's true. It's it's like it's it sounds corny, but you picture yourself doing this thing, and then you do it. And yeah. Like, Whoa. And that's a powerful thing. Like shit you can do with your physical and your mental, and like skating like is this again like a special thing, and like people are whatever. Uh, I'm corny or whatever, but like I'm being honest. Yeah. This is my this is my reality of like how I this is what skating is for me. You know, and I, I know a bunch of people that are like that. Dude, I know? it's I totally a agree. personal heartfelt thing. I'm sure surfers are a lot like it too. Like you're connecting with this thing. You know, we're not so much connecting with a wave, but you're connecting with the ground and your your surroundings around you and like you're making something happen within that like all right this is what's in front of me what can i do yeah what are my abilities what or like i've seen somebody do this but this way. It, there, it's infinite possibilities of what can be done like we were saying earlier you can go to a two million dollar skate park and be like man i'm not feeling this you can go to the parking lot next door and there's a curb or a fucking two by four yeah. And you have the time of your life skating some trash on the ground. Yeah. That's like, a lot of people don't have that, any, you know what I mean? Like, they're just, uh, they're, they don't participate in things. You can't fake skating, like, yeah. no matter yeah. what gear you get or whatever you rep. Like, you can either kind of, like, eat, not like you're good at skating or you're not, but it's like, it will, skating will sort you out the physical For activity. sure. But it's like, um, to have a voice in skating, like skater to skater, it's like, we're going to respect skateboarders that are good at skateboarding and yeah. are our peers and are actually out there doing it. Yeah. It's like, we're going to respect those voices and perspectives, in my opinion. But it seems like with football, it's like anyone who just memorized the stats is a part of that, like, gets that kind of respect. Like, yeah. oh, I'm a football fan because I know that fucking so-and-so did this yeah, on October yeah. or whatever. It's like... That doesn't really make you involved. No, because <laughs> I think the, the podcast thing reminds me a bit about of how, like, in the 80s, before digital and the internet and everything, people made zines, and they communicated that way. There were, like, you know, skateboard publications, but 
skaters took it upon themselves to like, hey man, my my scene ain't represented. Yeah. This is what we're doing over here, which is what you're doing. You're like, hey man, yeah, there's, you know, there's the Nine Club and, and the Love Letters, which is sick, but uh, that's cool. But that's like, you know, there's there's all kinds of pro information out there. Sure. And I love it. Yeah. You know, like I'm a total fan of it, but there's like what we're doing here is our scene you know and there's a history here. yeah and there's still people generations that are still doing it steve o'hara chris santos paul o'hara pete talbert you know what i mean yeah and kevin day like jeff shank there's this rich history not out of ignorance but a lot of people don't realize like what these dudes have contributed mm -hmm. you know, because like dude, kevin day he's skated the sea bowl since like the late 70s he's still riding today yeah you know like you can't like those type of people are like their characters from a fucking movie or a novel or, you know what i mean like you can't write that character that that dude creates himself yeah you know what i mean like kevin is a character yeah and like just the history of like shit that's you know around us and this is our scene you know and like you're you're taking modern technology and like creating that scene you know yeah, which yeah. is sick which to talk on the point of like yeah people memorize sports stats and whatnot but like skaters kind of take it upon themselves of like man i don't like these brands that are out here i'm gonna start it here yeah you know what i mean and for better or for worse you know and people oh the market's already flooded and it's like yeah but this person's wants to put their spin on it and like look at the shit that like comes out you know it's like skaters create their own reality a lot you know you don't see that you're like a football player or whatever like uh, i guess they do maybe create their own like Michael Jordan's Air Force I don't even know what it's called but like it's but it's through like a bigger entity yeah like backing it skaters are just like man let's pool our resources and like get a couple bucks and like we're gonna start a clothing brand you know? yeah and like screen print shirts in our garage and like that can either you know it never leaves the garage or state like um ideas. oh ideas yeah it's a perfect example that yeah. dude's creating his own thing yeah you know what I mean and that's that's a fucking amazing part of skateboard of like and to this day like there's still like there's like i've seen a resurgence people are printing zines yeah online zines there's, there's all this content you're not a pro doing this but you're participating in the thing that you love you yeah and not to say that like i'm sure people love sports and whatever but you don't see them creating this content yeah this community so much i feel like it'd be so weird like if someone was like yo i'm a fucking basketball fan i'm gonna do a, a podcast where i talk to basketball players like other basketball players would be like what that's weird yeah, but we, yeah. like we as skateboarders we kind of get like it's almost because no one ever did anything for us it yeah. was never a league it was like it's been the responsibility of the participants themselves to document and preserve the culture for sure there's no like i mean yeah you have brands yeah. that put on events or whatever but there's no like narrative of like this is what skateboarding is it's just yeah. it's being written as we go for sure know? and like and now nowadays like the whole like um, diy is like so fucking driven into the ground but it's true like it's the same of like punk rock and hardcore like nobody was gonna support you doing this so who's gonna do it you're gonna do it yeah and skaters are still doing that like look at like look at the spots that are out there skaters are creating spots and, and it's like there there is now like compared to 20 years ago you can go to almost any town and do skate park yeah but um pretty sure you can go to almost any town and there's probably a DIY I was just spot. gonna say there's probably a DIY spot you know too. and it's like to me like it, it doesn't matter how fucking good it is the fact that people are taking initiative and like doing something you know what I mean for like cause that's like you're planting a seed and you're showing people like hey we can do this you don't need 
I guess you do need permission, but you don't necessarily need permission. You know what I mean? It's like, do it and see where it goes. You know, you just let it grow. I think it's like um, getting out of the way of your own head. For sure, yeah. Like yeah. there's so many reasons why you'll tell yourself that you won't go somewhere or won't do something. And it's just like, with this podcast, I was like, for months or years, I had a, a reason no one would watch it. I don't have yeah. the technology, it's gonna suck, this and that. And it turns out you just actually kind of have to get in the ring and do something and suck at it. Yeah. And then you either enjoy it or you don't. And yeah. if you enjoy it, you'll get better at it, well, you know? that's skateboarding in a nutshell. Yeah. Right there, you know, like you're gonna, you're gonna start doing it. You're not gonna be good at it, but if you're into it, you're gonna each time you do this thing or participate in it, you're gonna learn from it. You're gonna take something away from it, hopefully. You're gonna contribute to something, you know what I mean? It's it's a constant, like, uh, uh, quote Joe Strummer, no input, no output. If you ain't putting anything in, what, what are you getting back? Yeah. It's stop relying on, well, maybe they'll do it. The city will do it. Like, fuck it. Yeah. You do it. Good or bad. And like any anything in life, not even skateboarding. Like, I want this to happen. Will yourself to do it. And like you said, like, probably gonna suck at it. Yeah. Oh well. You're gonna get better. You just put your head down and do it. And just like, there's, whether you do something fucking, you build the sickest thing. No matter what you do, especially now, with like, everybody has a soapbox to talk shit yeah. online. No matter what you do, I've learned, that I learned this one the hard way. Like, no matter what I build or our, uh, we build as a company, this guy's gonna love it, this guy's gonna hate it. You're not gonna please everybody. The only people you should be like, concerned with pleasing is yourself. Yeah. And, like, the people you love and care about and like, trying to make that connection i try to never take skateboarding for granted especially if you get older and you recognize like man time is so precious and there's not a lot of it and like you were saying we're like a blip you know yeah. not to get heavy but no. like you are only allotted so much time and like what you do with that like you said a life lived skateboarding is a life well lived yeah some people probably would think otherwise fine that's cool if you want to chase possessions and money and whatever power whatever man that's your trip but like skate skating for us for me it's like i've got to go to places that are just like, how did i end up here how in the fucking world did i get here think about uh you go and skate in whatever mood you're in and whatever and you're trying to like sort some shit out you do some shit that like you've been wanting to do or like you didn't think you could do or I'm gonna try this, see what happens to me. Do it. Dude, that mental high, that that sense of like a, I guess you'd call it accomplishment, but of just like, whoa, I did this, you know, and that that will carry you like you'll you'll be juiced on that for like weeks. You know what I mean? Like, Maybe forever. Yeah, yeah, like because you think back like man, I remember we skated here and like the session, not even so much a trip. Like, man, that was sick. We fucking had a great session. That's important because it keeps you like moving forward. You know what I mean? And, like, it's it'll like allow you to inspire yourself. Yeah. And not on some corny shit, but it's just like, like, dude, I ne well, I skated my whole life. In my 20s, I just accepted the fact that I was like, I will never do airs. I was like, yeah. I will just always go to disaster. I was <laughs> yeah. like, I'll never do airs. And now I can, I know how to do airs a little bit. Yeah. And it's like, I never thought I would do a frontside air on transition. And I'm fucking 40. Yeah. And it's like, there's a certain, I'm not bragging because I don't no, think that, no, I don't no. think I have good airs. <laughs> but I'm saying there's a certain self satisfaction and just like, you went from thinking, you're like, you went from being like, oh, that's like, that's for, that's like a magical, magical people do that. I'm not magical. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then over time, you just, you, one day you pop one and then there's like, like, I don't think I'll ever let go of that like self-satisfaction oh, of just no. like, 
holy shit, like, or, or like, yeah, dude, when, when you were a kid in New England or whatever, skating your local curb, like, did you ever think you were going to fucking be able to, like, grind in a swimming pool? No. You know what I mean? I all. just thought that was, like, like, rock star shit. Yeah, like, that only oh, happens in California. Yeah. yeah back or, then, especially. Especially like, back then. Like. And, and now it's just, like. Now it's almost like where everyone's good. Yeah. That I just yeah. get more hyped on the, uh, and it's like, I'm not trying to make myself out to be some mystic, but it's kind of like the essence of someone sure, skating, dude, you know? For sure. I'll come here sometimes at like seven in the morning by myself. And I won't do anything except for like push around in a circle and ollie all the cracks. Like I ollied the curb. Oh, there's, there's a broken bike on the ground. Well, I ollied the bike on its side. <laughs> well, it took me like nine tries, but like it looked like fucking garbage, but like whatever. It's the same thing as like a kid. You're like, man, you're trying it. You're trying, and then you do it, and you're like, whoa, I did it. You know, and that's like, that's never going to go away yeah. to me. Like, that's the like, that's the like, um, the beauty and the, the like, uh, just the purity of it. You know, like the, the little kid, and you're still like, you're playing you know and but it's you're playing but you're also you're like you have the, all these years of experience behind you and it's 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 deeper than just like it, it I, it's so hard it's such a personal thing it's super hard to explain you understand it, it, it most people that skate understand it it's this connected thing you have with this fucking piece of wood yeah uh, what like it's it doesn't make sense but but it does because it's like it's this weird it's not a sport it's it's kind of an art you know what I, people always want oh it's the you know what i mean yeah. it's all this stuff it's, you yeah. know what i mean it's like but it it really all it is is just you going out with yourself what can i you know what I mean? Like how, what can I get this? How can I manipulate this thing to either do tricks or like, I just need to go ride. You know what I mean? It, it, you can't even explain it after a while. Yeah. And everybody tries to, and you know, but it's like, it's just this thing you do. It's you like, know? you can try to explain it from the top. It's like, I could sit here and say, skateboarding is freedom. Yeah. Right. But then you're like, well, what is freedom? And you're just like, well, it's the 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 ability to express oneself however in whatever capacity you see fit and it's just like there's so many things before like i was saying about like capitalism like concrete like a fucking a store with a ledge like why is there a loading dock there what yeah, comes in yeah. from the truck where like, there's <laughs> yeah. so many little different splinters and pieces of it like they always talk about the california drought yeah. like and that gave birth to skating pools yeah and so it's like it's it's dependent on the rest of society what's going on yeah. but it's also this like independent like swirling thing that's it's constantly changing and then it's also like we build it up and talk yeah. about it like skateboarding skateboarding but it's also like at the end of the day it's just like you're saying yeah. it's just it's fucking pushing down the street or what like yeah. whatever you know so it's like it's it's super complex and it's super simple you know, it's, it's a paradox. It, yeah. I mean, it, this has all been talked about a million times and there's no real, there's no answer. There's no like, it's this, which is what makes it special. Yeah. Because it is, it, it's a toy and you just you can do whatever. You can choose to do what you want or not do what you want. And it's like, it, it's like constantly evolving, changing, and there's infinite possibilities of what you can do where you can go, what you can ride. And it, it's, it opens your eyes to like, most people see like, all right, stair set, you walk up and down, you go to the building, you do whatever you do, and the skater goes, oh, what's that? Yeah. What can I do on that? And it, it definitely makes your perspective different. And that's not like, cool, I'm a skater, man. I see the world different. It's yeah. true though. Dude. It is true. I mean, dude, fucking, still drive around like fucking my wife's like what are you doing like you know we're in the car and I'm, nothing she's like i know what you're doing you're going to look behind that building 
I can't help myself. Yeah. It's ingrained in, in my brain. I want to know what's behind there. There might be something back there to skate. I might not be able to skate it, but hey, dude, I've seen this thing back here. You should go check it out. You know what I mean? And that's like, that's never going to stop for me. I'm going to, if I if I live to be 80 years old, man, I'm going down the road. What's over there? You know, maybe I'll go up and down the loading dock. But, you know what I mean? Like, who knows? But like, that to me is just like, that's the that's the gift of skateboarding it, it gives you this perspective of like don't just like take what's in front of you as what it is you know like look at it ask some questions deal with look, it yeah like look around it what what else can we do with this you know and it's like that's what's sick is like you you can gain this perspective and this, this view of like you don't always have to accept everything you know and like you can create your own reality and you like you said you can live a life of just like yeah man this is what i did yeah because you're all gonna be dirt in the ground at some point so fuck dude do do something that you really like with the people you you did you know it's like how how could it be how i think we're at the point now hopefully where as a society we can look at things and go how could like no no one way of life could possibly be better or more yeah, valid than yeah. another and so like i hope that that's true and and so what's better than skateboarding to me i'm like yeah. nothing so yeah, that's how yeah. i want to that's what i want to immerse myself in yeah. and it's not even a want it's just it's it's just what happened like I, yeah like every day i wake up and it's like oh i'm gonna go skate or i'm talking to someone that wants yeah. to go skate or like there's some type of skating's gonna come it's, back to it's me. permeated <laughs> into <laughs> everything you do yeah. it's just how it is man it's like you can either like I've tried to get away from yeah, it. I've tried to be like, I'm going for a hike today. I'm turning off my phone. I don't want to skate. I don't want to see a fucking Instagram yeah, video. Yeah. Like I've tried to get fully away, but it's like, I don't even think I have like a piece of clothes that doesn't have like yeah, something. something. There's no, you can't get away from exactly. it. Exactly. <laughs> and it's, it's like, it's kind of took <laughs> For sure. Don't get me wrong. Like it, especially as you get older, like we were saying before, like taking breaks is nice. Yeah. Cause then it like, then when you do like rest, like your body you get older like man i ate shit dude or like even if you didn't eat shit you had this sick ass session but your body doesn't recover like it used to man i'm probably not gonna skate for like a few days or yeah. a week or whatever that's fine that gives you opportunity to like do something else with your time you know and like get into pursue other things you know, like this yeah you know, like it's just but it's connected to it you know? yeah like you can't get away from it. anything else you want to say to the people or yourself or me uh enjoy skateboarding it ain't that big of a deal but it is yeah you know it's like take it serious it, understand that it's this it's this special thing it's a gift but at the same time like it's just it's just a toy enjoy it don't make it like uh fuck do that or uh, you're gonna do it yeah you can't help yourself because like you want to push yourself you want to do these things but at the same time like at the end of the day like just be happy that you get to run this thing you know and like share these 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 experiences with people that you care about and like treat it that way treat it as like don't take it for granted, you know, and like, don't take the people for granted either, you know, like, everybody's equal as far as I'm concerned, and there's too much bullshit in the world these days to, like, hate on somebody because they're into DGK or he's into yes. fucking Zero or Baker, like, you, dude, like, who cares, we're all just trying to fucking get our fucking groove on and, like, and just, like, all my friends and people that are, like I'm lucky to still have like, a pretty solid group of skaters that I've been skating with for 20 plus, 30 plus years. Which to me, that's like the beauty of where we're from. It's like there's there's still a heavy scene here. Yeah, people have been doing it for a long, long time. Like, just to do it. You know what I mean?